keep hankering for them or rejecting them and being averse to them and I want to be peaceful, both will not happen. It's not possible. That is why a meditation is not working. Because you are holding on to both. I'm not saying leave your family and go to the Himalayas. Yeah? Renunciation is not from here. Where is renunciation? Here. From here be dispassionate. What is, is. I have a role to play. I play that 100% honestly, sincerely, with integrity I play my role. And no attachment to that role. Be done with it and move on to the next. Next action, next action, next action, next moment. Keep moving, moment to moment to moment. Live life like that. Yes. Then only can you experience meditation like this. Yeah. The next sutra was, when you have to begin on the path, you have to make an effort. What is the effort? To be in the center. To be choiceless, to be in the center. Once you are into that center, then? Yes. Next sutra was? Your mind is your friend. When is it your friend? When it is in the center, when it is not tilting towards this side and not tilting towards that side. It is in the center, then it is my friend. And when is it my enemy? When there is either this dwandva or that dwandva. Clear? So what are the qualities of a sage? Equanimous in all situations. And what were the examples of situations which were not there in your sutras, but I told you? Hot and cold, praise and criticism, pain and pleasure, sukha and dukha in Sanskrit if you want to know. Love and hatred. Praise and insult. Praise and insult. All different kinds of people you remember? Yes? The hateful people, the indifferent people, the good-hearted people, the people doing good things, righteous people, unrighteous people, equanimous with all and everything. What is, is. That is a yogi because he is centered. Yeah? Come what may, be equanimous. It doesn't matter whether you are poor or you are rich. It doesn't matter whether you are successful or you are not successful. It doesn't matter. And don't attach this over-importance to these materialistic ambitions that you have. You attain equanimity, that peace of mind, and keep doing moment to moment. Every thing will fall into its place automatically. If success has to come to you, it will come to you. It cannot evade you. And if it is not meant for you, you break your head against the wall. It is not happening, darling. So drop this feverishness. Identify what is your major, major feverishness, that which takes your peace away. And drop it. Tyag, from today I let, let you go. Yes, my darling, I was holding on to you all these days. I am letting you go. Whatever feverishness you have. Just be. So, like, if everything is supposed to happen, then, uh, like, we have to we say, like, oh, I did this, I got that success, I got that did this, and then that. It happened to happen, so it's not you think yeah. it was happening. Then. Yeah. What is there what to take away? Really? to make me grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> Guruji says, no, in one of his knowledge sheets, there is no need for any compassion, there is no need for any gratitude. There is really no need. 
it with the higher, deeper meaning of it. And people think, oh, how can Guruji talk like that? <laughs> Guruji Singh, don't be grateful. Guruji Singh, don't be compassionate. When Buddha says, Buddha was the most compassionate. But he says, really, there is no need to be compassionate because really there is no misery. Your mind has created the misery. It's like in your in a dream and in your dream you are thinking, oh, it is painful, it is painful, it is painful. Buddha is saying, wake up. It's not. Just wake up. The moment you wake up from a dream, you realize it's not there. It's not true. That is why Buddha says there is no need for compassion because there is no misery only. Yeah, but if you have not come to that understanding yet, it's okay. Be these steps. We start with being in the center. Drop, drop this going this way, going that way, going this way, going that way. Then you learn to be in the center. And you continuously start walking in the center. With some time of practice, Misery will not be able to touch you. It will stop existing for you. That does not mean Dukkha will not come. If there is an earthquake, even I will experience it. Yeah? But the way people will suffer in the mind because of the fear of what the earthquake will take away from them, that suffering will not happen to me. Why? Because I have walked that path of being in the center. Got it? This is about the meditation technique. Yeah. They had kusha grass and all that in those days. But basically the concept is insulation from gravity, from the earth. Yeah. This is the position. I showed you 90 degrees is important yeah, because that makes the zero gravity effect on you. Little also you are tilting like this or sitting like this, you will not be able to meditate. You have to be sitting absolutely straight. Yeah? The first video. Do you have any questions? Yesterday we started with this uh, first sutra and uh, we had one mention of humility about nature. Now, for me, especially, it's difficult to accept the law of nature as it is. It seems to be very static. Doesn't seem like this. That to me, doesn't seem like this has evolved. What I mean by this is, uh, even when we talk about the Dash Dashartha, the different avatars have an evolution, and the final avatar is like a not sage, but something like a very it's like a sage person. Does the same thing apply? It's a, it's a thought, it's not a question, it's a thought discussion. Does Niti also evolve? Okay, I plant here a tree, seed for pumpkin, it sprouts to a pumpkin. The gravity pulls me down in this universe. Is there an existence where things are very different? You may, what I want mean to say is Niti, does it have the same? So this is one it's not kind of existence in yours. It's possible to another kind of universe. With different rules, you mean. With different evolving rules. Yeah. Hmm. There is. You learn in Upanishads. So you've not reached Upanishads yet. You've done Patanjali and Ashtavata. Okay, you'll get there. So there, he was talking about it no, in the middle, if you were paying attention. There are 14 planes of existence. This is just one plane. Yeah. So there are slightly different rules for that plane. But those rules for that plane are then static. The rule might be slightly different there than here, but here the rules are firm and fixed and it is the way it is and then it is the way it is. <laughs> so if you transition from one plane to another, 
Yes, you do. The rules are given, and then. There is no learning and unlearning. <coughs> it's a knowing. Yeah, it's all a knowing. Like you play a video game, you one life is gone, you progress to the next life, you progress to the next life. There's not much learning. It is already a knowing how to progress. Even if it's going from one level to the next level to the next level to the next level, it's similar. There is a knowing, a knowingness which is there in all of us. Which is somewhere deep embedded. It just comes up when it's the right time. Huh? No, has electricity changed? Has gravity changed? <laughs> Cannot change. For this physical level of existence, it is what it is, and it will always be like that. It's hundred percent fair. Niyati is never unfair. Karma is never unfair. Yeah, it's one hundred percent fair. You get what you deserve, fair and square. Yeah, whether you hate it or you love it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that way, this whole consciousness hasn't changed, right? Cannot. It cannot. <laughs> There is no evolution. we will stream the next video video 2 now